I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, acknowledge the, the folks who have really started this ball rolling um, in South Asia in the brick kilns, uh, especially Br uh, Bill Carter. Uh, David Parker is also very much involved in, in some of the, the local uh, NGOs as well, Global Fairness and Better Brick Nepal and Good Weave. They've all been uh, phenomenal. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit later about our uh, collaborations with Kathmandu University. <clears throat> now, when most people think of Nepal, um, you know, it's representative of South, South Asia, except for one thing. It has this, this massive mountain range that runs through it. And when you say Nepal, especially to, to anybody, you know, in my country, in the U.S., you know, they think the Himalayas and Mount Everest and um, trekking and massive river valleys. Some even say hydroelectric. Some know that you know Nepal is known for its water resources. But what what, what many forget is that uh, it's actually very much a built environment. And if you look down at this overview of uh, Kathmandu, <clears throat> the capital of Nepal, you see just about everything there is made out of brick. Where do those bricks come from? That's where we take it to the brick factories. So Nepal has has hundreds of brick factories. Uh, South Asia has thousands and thousands. So the things that we point out in this presentation also pertain to, especially to India, uh, Pakistan, going into Africa as well, and even into Latin America. Brick kilns um, are, are everywhere. Now, the brick season in Nepal lasts for <clears throat> about six months, five or six months. There's a rainy season and a dry season. And during the rainy season, the brick kilns are basically rice paddies and, and mustard fields. But during the, the dry season, this is what it looks like. A, a little community springs up, people live on the, uh, on the brick fact in the brick factories, and, and basically what you're seeing here in the foreground are all the drying bricks. And in the background is what we call a, a bull's trench, uh, fixed chimney brick kiln. So that fancy terminology is they put a bunch of green bricks in there, bury them, put them on fire, and then they come out nice and red. And so that's what's okay. building up uh, this area. <clears throat> so a little closer look at the, at the stacks. Now, the, the, the air pollution in Nepal has actually been studied fairly extensively um, in communities. Uh, and, and if you've been to Nepal, the, the air pollution is, is horrendous. However, to a lesser extent is, is what this air pollution and what the local contaminants are doing to the workers. <clears throat> now, this is a picture I took, uh, and, and again, these pictures are, are either my pictures or um, also from Sesananda Sanjel, who is one of my major research collaborators, um, along with uh, Bill Carter. So this, these are these are our photos. Um, this was one I snapped up on a on the ridge trail above Kathmandu. That uh, earthquake in 2015 just did significant damage, and so whatever people were not able to recover in terms of bricks, they had to turn to the brick factories. And so brick factories have been extremely busy um, building up Nepal again. <clears throat> so it's, it's hard work. Here's a man that's got a nice, happy face, um, but what's not making him happy is probably his back here. Uh, each of those bricks weighs anywhere from three to five pounds. And so he's stacking those after they've dried in the sun, and then they get carried over to the brick kiln. So these folks are actually sitting inside the brick kiln. Um, and, and eventually these green bricks get buried and lit on fire. So very, uh, in some cases, it's a very technical um, part of the work is this, this brick stacking. We move on to uh, an area that's probably paid the highest. This, this is even more technical. These are called the fire masters. So he is, he is sitting on top or standing on top of, of the fired bricks right now as they, as they burn. And he has to enter in the right amount of coal or seed or dung or whatever will burn into these, into these fires to get that going. <clears throat> then we get to what uh, our studies have, have proven to be probably the most hazardous work on site, and that would be our red, red brick carriers. So all of those are, are fired bricks, and not only do we have ergonomic issues, but the, the ground in this area, in this particular area of Bhaktapur, which is a little bit east of Kathmandu, 
the soil is laden with, with silica. And so this is dust and silica dust uh, to the extreme. In fact, we've done quite a few uh, studies with, with a particular instrument, and we've uh, broken that instrument four times now because of the high dust content. Uh, it, was, it just overloaded the sensors four different times. So we're talking about extreme dust levels. <clears throat> now, you saw that last guy. He had a, he had a stack of six. This, this, this person right here is going for eight bricks. They get paid by the brick, so it's all piecework. So the more they can get on there, the better. But you can see as he goes in, all of this dust falls into his face, and they are just they're covered in orange dust pretty much uh, from, from the very start. Let me go. Let me go to the next level. Um, to to we have the the child labors involved as well as as you saw from Susan's um, uh, presentation. Child labor is is rampant in in Nepal, and you know so they are from from the very young who do the picking up of the bricks to the driving of the trucks. Um, even even those who are of age are still very young. Uh, the young girls, you know, they look like they're having fun, but they're taking care of the babies because they're mothers are carrying bricks now at three to five pounds per brick you do the math on how many how many pounds she's carrying um, severe ergonomic issues here uh, as they carry well over 100 pounds on their back collaborations with Kathmandu is impressive so this is Kathmandu University um, and they have been the major push in doing something about these these brick kilns they have along with our work is we've provided equipment and the training for uh, understanding what what levels they're being exposed to. So these are workers with silica, you know, getting monitored for silica with their pumps. Um, they also did a, a extensive questionnaires. So here are some of the questionnaires going on, um, and where they they studied over or surveyed over 400 workers, and um, it, 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 the conclusions are they had major major. Uh, upper respiratory problems. So I'll conclude with next steps. Um, we need more people. We need more money. Uh, but we're moving into the engineering control phase now as we try to fix this challenge of not just in Nepal, but throughout South Asia and all over all over the world. Uh, so so any any uh, passion you have, any dollar figures you, you have can all go toward the next phase, which would be to uh, – Institute some some of these local NGOs and uh, other groups. So um, that's my presentation. Thank you.